Hello and welcome to the Homeless Consultants channel. My name is Paul B. I am the Homeless Consultant. And today I just want to talk as briefly as possible about yet another stalker in my workplace. Now this has been going on for some time. I never really paid a whole lot of attention to it at first, but there is a big truck, and I mean big, white pickup truck with lights all over it and some kind of writing on the side. I still haven't been able to see what the writing is. But this truck keeps entering our parking lot over, and again, I don't know how long because it's just kind of eased in over the last several weeks. This truck just enters the parking lot and drives in a circle through the parking lot. At least every time I've ever watched, he always ends up behind my car very slowly and then just leaves again doesn't seem to have anything to do whatsoever with any of the businesses in our building doesn't come in and stay doesn't I've never seen who's driving it I've never seen who goes in the building I've never I mean I've never seen them go into the building I've never seen them do anything but drive into the lot and at least, again, the times that I'm seeing this, it's always in some way, shape, or form, always, without exception, near my car, at least briefly, when it doesn't have to be. It has to go out of its way to get there every single time. Now, the problem isn't so much that. There's weirdos out there in this world, I think you know. The problem, if you look back to the last weekend, I did a video called the first blizzard of the season. On the morning of that day, which was Friday, to beat the snow, I came into work about two hours early. And it was hard to believe, this usually doesn't happen, but the people who work in the building, not our business, but the other businesses, they were smart enough to basically not come in that day. They usually come in, create all kinds of havoc, but they really didn't so it was mainly just my group for the most part that was there that day so I pulled in right at the entrance and just turned around and parked right there because I had two hours for I had to go to work everyone else is pretty much parked up there by the building I normally park about halfway in between which is usually supposed to be all by myself because Minnesotans are creepy Remember, I've told you before, at least when it's warmer out, these cars always, if I park anywhere out in the middle of nowhere, it doesn't take long before you've got someone parked right next to me and right next to me. One or the other or both. Often, several times throughout the day. They'll park there, they'll leave. And whenever they do, if it's the driver who's parking next to me, they always have some reason to walk around to go into their passenger side. And they just take a look inside my car. The people who park on the other side, as they're getting out, you just watch them. You watch them, and their head and their eyes turn ever so briefly to look inside my car. That's what Minnesotans do. They're very nosy. They won't help other people, but they will stare at and gossip about. They pay attention to other people. So I park out in the middle of nowhere, and these people are always doing this. And these are my coworkers. even. They are other people in the building. In the winter, that doesn't happen as often because that requires them to walk through a lot of cold and ice to get to the building. So when I got there early on Friday, to, just as the snow's just starting to start, just very light snow, and I sat there for two hours, I wasn't there terribly long, probably 15 or 20 minutes before this big pickup truck comes in. And we all know what a big pickup truck is a metaphor for, right? Big anatomy. There's, there's, just as an aside, folks, there's no reason, there's no earthly reason in this day and age, at this time, to purchase a truck that is that gargantuan. Super wide, super long, big, something that gets about five miles per gallon 
and the bed of the truck is maybe 10% bigger than the bed of a normal size truck. You might argue, I don't know on this one, I can't remember, there might be a second cab in the back or something, but I only see the shadow of one person in this truck. I don't see a family of Mexicans sitting in the back, for example. I just see one person driving around in this big truck with the lights on. Big truck equals big anatomy. That's the kind of creature you're dealing with here. I'm there 15, 20 minutes. This person pulls in to our lot right next to me. I didn't notice because I was trying to do something. And I see them drive off there. And of course, they drive off, they make a U-turn, they come right back and very slowly pull right in front of me. And leave. Very productive use of their time. The thing is, lately, whenever I'm in the car, this truck seems to pull in and pull right next to me for reasons unknown, with no purpose whatsoever being in our, our entire business park that I can discern. That night was after the snowstorm. You saw my video, first blizzard of the season. When I came out of work, my car was absolutely buried way out at the end of the parking lot. Now, if you remember, I told you there were no tire tracks in that parking lot, right? And that's true. That's true. Over by the building, down to the parking garage. But over by my car, yeah, there were tire tracks there. Earlier in the day, for example, my coworkers, and this is before my coworkers left, they all left early. Before they left, one of them had said, Hey, Paul, it looks like there's a tow truck out there at your car. And I was like, What? And you look out there, and guess what it was? A big white pickup truck hovering around behind my car for some reason out in the middle of nowhere during a snowstorm. Once again, this is what, six hours later after the first time he pulled through the parking lot, doing nothing, does the same thing again and gravitates straight for my car. No purpose whatsoever. That's six hours twice this weirdo felt compelled to come into a business park that he doesn't appear to have anything to do with, although he might, we'll see in a moment and just be near me, be near my car. What's he doing? Checking out to see if I'm sitting in there? Now it's dark most of the time this time of year. So I can see the car, but I can't see details. I certainly can't see through the glass when it's lit up at night. How many times is that weirdo out there and what is he doing? Have you ever heard of those people who their, their, their fetish is to go out and not to be vulgar folks, but they like to go out and kneel down and have sex with people's cars with the tailpipe. Is that what this guy's doing? Because I don't understand what he's doing near my car. All I know is that he has a big truck. And a big truck is a metaphor for presumably big anatomy. So Hours after that event, after everyone else had left and I'm the last person at the office for a couple hours, and then I leave and I go out and I do everything I told you about. I lose all my food and I go downstairs to the dry parking lot where there, there isn't snow, it's just dry. And I made my video and I told you those snow plows were going to be into a plow, but they always, every year, they always spend a lot of their time focusing on me, who's just sitting in his car, doing nothing, minding his own business. And it wasn't long after, it was maybe a half hour, 45 minutes after I made that video when, yeah, there they came. Here comes the bobcat, straight downstairs. First place they go is straight downstairs, and he starts plowing the very first part of the whole lot. 
the entire building, the two upper decks, the lower parking lot, the parking garage, all that, the first place he goes is the little U-turn next to the parking garage where I'm at. And this thing is there for maybe 15 minutes. Now you gotta understand, I get to watch all this, so I get to watch the timing and write down the timing, how long these people spend clearing the entire parking lot. The amount of time that that bobcat sat there with a beeline straight looking right at me, clearing the same little spot over and over and over again, and you might say, oh, well Paul, he's trying to help you out, he sees a car in the garage and he's trying to help you get out of there. Folks, I can't get, a, I can't get up that big hill that thing wasn't plowed. In fact, about the only area I could drive this car in safely was the very area he plowed. That was the most shallow snow. I couldn't have got out of there anyway. By my reckoning, he spent about 15% of the time he spent in this entire complex. 15% of the time in that one tiny little area, which is about 30 feet by 40 or 50 feet. 15% of the time, the only spot in the entire complex that has straight visibility to me. So as that bobcat's there about 10 or 15 minutes, what comes down again, I see coming into the business park, a big, big white pickup truck with lights. That's the third time that day. Within seconds, that thing is down there right at the entrance to the parking garage. Didn't go anywhere else in the entire business park, anywhere else. Comes right down, again, into that little 30 by 50 or so area, the only spot where people can even watch me or see me. And he parks his truck there, essentially blocking the exit to the parking garage. And the truck's just sitting there with its big lights on just right where it can just stare right at me. And it sits there for about 10 minutes. And then it leaves. <laughs> just leaves. That, that truck doesn't have a plow on it. So three times on that day, the first blizzard of the year, extremely dangerous driving, the guy comes in when I'm there waiting to go into work, circles around and pulls right in front of me very slowly. Then my coworkers point out that this guy's out there near the rear end of my car in the snowstorm, which my car's parked out in Timbuktu. No earthly reason for anybody to be out there. That's about six hours later. And then about what, six or eight hours after that, the guy comes in again to a closed business park during a blizzard, goes straight downstairs to the one area where he can stare at me. Now, again, this is the truck that has recently been coming into our lot more and more often, always at some point being near my car, even if I park in a place where it doesn't make any rational sense for a vehicle that's going in and out to go near my car. It will make the special turn wherever it has to go to make sure that it goes near my car every time, at least every time that I see. There might be times it comes in that I don't see where it doesn't go near my car. I don't know. The next morning, I leave, you know, what, four or five in the morning. Okay, the snow has been plowed, the snowstorm's over, Due to the temperatures, the, the roads were actually relatively clear given how much snow there was at that point. Not really safe, but I'm basically the only person on the road except for snow plows, so not a big deal. I could take my leisure at least until I got to the main road where all the tailgaters started. But I leave. I come back and I go straight into work. This is Saturday. At the end of work on Saturday, I go out and do my thing again, I get in my car, I go down to the parking garage, and I park in a different spot. This spot has even less visibility. In fact, there's really only one 
place you could be. I mean, if you if you look at the <laughs> if if you look at the 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 area. <coughs> Sorry, I'm trying to remember my geometry here. If if you look at the area where they are, just do a little trigonometry there, right? I'm here. There's two areas there. You have to be in between. And if you measure all that out, it's less than the length of the truck. That's the only area in the entire business complex, top, bottom, side, parking lots, where anybody could see me. And it wasn't long before, guess what, folks? A big white pickup truck with lights on it comes into our parking lot, which, again, there was really nothing wrong with the parking lot. There was one area on the far side at the top that was pretty much ice. These plows don't do a great job. But the sun had melted off everything else. So there's nothing to plow. And this big truck comes down there, turns around right there next to me, and again, stops with a beeline straight looking at me. The bobcat came in around this time too, which makes, again, no sense because there was nothing to plow. Milking the clock. You know, so they can charge more money because they say they came in a second time. Problem was, there was nothing really to plow. There was this very light dusting that didn't affect anything. And I even got video of the bobcat moving this non-existent snow. It was ridiculous. Just watching this bobcat, it put a thing down and drag. There was not, there was no snow there, folks. It was just dust. Just milking the clot. Now we can, we came down here. Now we can charge you. That's Minnesota's idea of work. Meanwhile, upstairs on the upper deck, there was significant snow in places. Like I said, the plows didn't do a great job. There was significant snow. Not super thick, but significant compared to that. If you're going to come in at all, I would clear that away. But I got some video of that, and you can see on that snow, there isn't a single tire track. The Bobcat didn't do anything with that. And yet, that's where the people actually park. Nobody parks in the parking garage but me, for what it's worth. So up there, where the employees actually park, they didn't do anything. But the bobcat comes in and comes down to that one itty bitty teeny weeny area where there really isn't any snow, just a light dusting covering the ground, which was really just snow that blew off of the upper deck anyway. It wasn't new fallen snow. And it sits there and pretends to move snow while that creepy pickup truck is just sitting there doing nothing. Staring right at me. This is like midnight. Then the pickup truck leaves because the pickup truck has no purpose for being in our lot that I can discern. He appears to only come in to be near me. Sunday morning, I leave. I come in right at the time I go to work. I go straight inside to work. I come out of work. Now, I get out of work before everyone else does, before we close on Sunday. So, I take my leisure. I made some of that crappy soup. I changed my underwear and my socks. I just took care of business, right? Took the leisurely route. About 15 minutes before we close, there's still a bunch of cars in our parking lot in various places. One was in the middle of the upper deck of the garage. They were spread all around on that other parking lot. Oddly enough, except in one area where it was pure ice, because the plows don't do a very good job. Mr. Salty, that little salt truck that's always coming down to ride right next to me in a bone-dry parking garage, he didn't bother salting the actual lot where people actually park. He just dropped salt all over an empty parking garage to help degrade the concrete and make sure that that place collapses even sooner. Because nobody parks down there, you see. There's no reason to throw salt down on a dry parking garage where no one parks. You see, there's no reason to do that. You want to put the salt upstairs where it's a sheer ice and everybody is out there falling down like I did with my food, for example. But to this, to this day, I still have not seen them drop salt on that whole area where the people actually park. So 15 minutes before close... I go out to my car one last time. I'm going to put that underwear and socks that I changed in the trunk, and then I'm going to drive down to the parking garage because I got stuff to do. 
I walk out, open up the door, grab the bag, step out, and I can see everything. There's nothing in our parking lot but our employees. I walk back, open up the hatch, and I'm starting to try to find a place to jam this bag of clothes. It was maybe 15 seconds or so. 15 seconds. I look up, and there's a big white pickup truck driving slowly right in front of me with lights on in the dark on a Sunday night in a business park that is closed except for our business which is not something open to the public and this truck stops right in front of my car and sits there for about 20 seconds or so meanwhile I just stay behind the open hatch just trying to look and say what in the world because this guy scares the crap out of me this is a freaking weirdo folks this is a stalker so he's there for 20 maybe 30 seconds something along those lines and then as if he can't quite tell in the dark whether I'm the car he's looking for he goes down to the parking garage area to that one little area where you have to be in order to stare at me if I'm in the parking garage but I'm not down there am I so can you guess what happened he came straight back up again. He didn't feel like sitting there this time. He didn't feel like sitting there for 10 or 15 minutes this time. Every other time he does when I'm down there. And then he drives by and I got a little video but the, it was so dark it couldn't focus until he was basically out of the picture. You can see the video. Now folks, this stuff may seem kind of benign to you, but you got to understand, this doesn't make any rational sense. This is a business park that has businesses that do specific things. They're not public-facing businesses. These aren't like restaurants or something. This isn't where people come in and out and in and out. This is offices where we do work. And nobody else really has any business being there. And yet this truck keeps coming in over and over increasingly and every time that I see that it comes in it's always in some way shape or form near my car or related to my car statistically that doesn't make any sense because I might be parked over here I might be parked over there I might be parked downstairs in one of two places in the garage it doesn't make any sense My guess is that this guy is in some way associated with that loony bird manager of this place. I don't know what the association would be. You remember the manager who has astatophobia? The one who's always zeroing in on me. The one I've put the stalker videos in my workplace about before. The one who once pulled into the parking garage, halfway into the garage, and just stopped blocking all access. So I can't get out gets out of his car and just sits there like leaning on the window just staring right at me. The one who repeatedly has called the police to enter our park which they normally would never do. It's private property. It's none of their business. So the police come down there and check my ID and see what I'm all about. And as soon as I tell them I work here they just close up everything and say, what, what am I doing here? This guy works here. And they leave. And the police are just PO'd that they got their time wasted. But this creepy stalker manager apparently is the one who keeps calling the police. No one else does. No, there's no one else who cares. There's no one else who knows. There's no one else. So this weirdo pickup truck, for three days in a row, during times when I don't have a lot of maneuverability because of the snow he has come in and it just creeped me out now I'm supposed to after that I'm supposed to lean back and go to sleep because don't forget the only way I can do that is if I leave the car running to generate that itty bitty bitty bit of heat in the engine that hopefully will waft in here to keep me alive while I breathe in all those fumes and hope and pray that through the holes in this door the carbon monoxide doesn't just kill me overnight but in order to do that, since my brake doesn't work, I have to go stick a block under my wheel. Which means that if someone comes in in the middle of the night, I can't leave. Because my wheel's blocked. I can't escape. 
let's say I, I wake up to something like this and I look and there's a gun in my face. I can't leave. I can't just go and drive away because my car's blocked so that I don't roll away because I have to leave the car running to generate almost no heat whatsoever to stay alive. Now, if it wasn't for that white truck, guess how many people would be threatening me right now? Zero. Nobody is messing with me. Especially during a blizzard. Nobody was out during the blizzard. That road was dead. Other than plows, and this truck doesn't have a plow, nobody was on that road. It was a blizzard. You saw it. What is that truck doing out? Repeatedly entering a business park that they have nothing to do with. Unless they're somehow associated with that creepy, osteotophobic building manager. Folks, this is my workplace. No matter what's going on with me being homeless and having to have a place to go and do things, sitting in the car for an extended period of time, even sleeping in the car, regardless of any of that, that is my workplace. I work there. My job is there. My employer is there. I'm supposed to be there. I have every right to be there. And with all these other businesses at any time of the day, at midnight, at two in the morning, at four in the morning, at noon, any time of the day or night, anyone in any of those businesses can and do come into our parking lot, park, and go into that building. Sometimes they'll pull into our parking lot and they'll sit there on the phone for a half hour or an hour. They're sitting in their car for an extended period of time. Not one time have I ever seen that building manager or this creepy truck ever concern themselves with those people. Ever. Not even once. Ever. And yet, they make this kind of concerted effort to zero in and focus on me to the extent that out of this huge tens of thousands of square feet, they're in a 30 by 50 area, the the stupidest area you could possibly want to park your vehicle in the hole. It's a U-turn. That's all it is, folks. It's a U-turn area to get into the parking garage. That's all it is. Why would you park there? But that's where they park. And they just sit there with a beeline straight so they can stare at me. It's called intimidation. It's this passive-aggressive thing. That manager is so osteotophobic. He doesn't care that I work there. You're homeless. If you're homeless, you gots to go even if you belong here, even if you're supposed to be here. The reason I have perfect attendance at that workplace, folks, is in part because I do this, because I make sure that if there's going to be a blizzard, I'm not 20 miles away, if I can help it at all. I do everything I can to make sure I'm already there. So when everyone else can't get into work, one person is there to make sure that things are taken care of. That person is me. And yet when I'm there alone doing things like that, or when everyone else leaves because they can't handle it, and they leave me as the only person working, or at night when I'm there sleeping or what have you, I've got these creepy people who come in, they, they, out of their busy lives, they take the time repeatedly on the same day to come in and mess with me. Now, who's the weirdo, folks? Is it the guy who works in that building, who's parked at the building, whether he's sleeping there or not, I belong there? Or is it the creepy weirdo who, I can't figure out why he's there, who keeps coming in over and over and over to spend 10 or 15 minutes staring at me, and then he leaves? Which one is the weirdo? I did some math earlier. I'm going to have to look up what I came up with. Out of those three days that I just told you about with that truck, I had, in theory, in theory, if, if I had been able to just leave work, go down to the parking garage, and do something productive, do productive things for the hours, get sleep, get the sleep I need, get up in the morning, do some more productive things, and then go into work. If I had been allowed to do that without interruption, without being stalked, I would have had about approximately 22 hours of productive time. You know what I'm trying to do here, folks? I do need my glasses. You know what I was trying to do down there this time? I mean, I've always got stuff going on. I've always got multiple projects going. Here's what was on my agenda for this weekend when this truck was creeping me out. Most every year I do a Christmas mix of music. 
so I wanted to work on that. I wanted to make animated Christmas cards. I've been studying animation lately. There's a one hour tutorial on uh, fractals, mathematics, and that's going to take probably three or four hours. As I go through it, stop it, you know, do, do some math, do some things. I have been wanting to go through this tutorial video for so long. Learning animation, like I said. I'm also trying to enter five contests, and the deadline is. I think it's Christmas, it might be New Year's, but it's coming up very quickly now. Five contests. Uh, a writing contest, photography, photoshopping, animation, and rendering contests. Those are the kinds of things I want to spend that 22 hours doing. You know how much productive time I got out of all that, those three days? Zero. Of all those things I just listed out, I spent no time on them at all except for the two days when I was able to get everything set up and I started for about five minutes before that creepy pickup truck came in there and made my skin crawl. And then I just had to shut this thing and just... Because I can't work when I have to focus, I have to concentrate, I have to focus like a laser beam, that's how you learn. That's why I was at the top of my class all through school because I know how to learn and study. It requires concentration. You can't concentrate when some creepy and potentially dangerous, obviously not all there psycho, keeps coming in and stalking you all the time. Especially when it's in a place that is probably the second safest place after your home, your workplace. And as I said, I don't know, but the odds based on everything I've seen over the years, the odds are high that this creep in this big truck, which of course means that he has big anatomy, right? Big truck. The odds are that that guy has some association with the manager of this building who has already established himself as a loopy loon long ago, an astateophobe. The reason I bring this up ties into my what will probably be my next video. But I want to emphasize, folks, 22 hours I had to devote to this kind of productive lifestyle. Instead, those 22 hours were spent sitting in this car doing nothing but feeling this adrenaline rush. It's the same thing I felt when I was inside my home. When my neighbors would shake the whole building. When they would just suddenly let out a blood-curdling scream. When they would drop a refrigerator on my ceiling when they would slam a door and set my pets off and watch things shaking on the walls, on the fish tank, watch the water start moving. When I had my headphones on full blast as loud as I could and I could still hear and feel that noise through it all. It's the same thing that put me on the floor in the fetal position. That's why I'm homeless, folks. It's because of what those neighbors did to me. What this creep in this truck and this lunatic manager of this property are doing is the same thing. This is what Minnesotans do. It's the point I've been trying to make for the longest time. Minnesotans are not all there. They are socially inept loony birds. I'm trying to get something productive done my whole life from the time I was a little kid. I'm studying. I'm mastering skills. I'm mastering disciplines. I'm mastering science, which is why I can make a series on junk science versus legitimate science. Because I spent a lifetime from the youngest age learning it. The reason I can drum well and play guitar well, the reason I can do all these things well is because I put the time in to master them. I'm trying to master something else. I'm trying to enter contests. That's how you help build a name for yourself and proceed forward in terms of marketable skills and careers. And instead, I got zero done. And Christmas is a week and a half away. How am I going to enter all those contests now? This isn't the first time. These people interrupt what I'm doing every time. For the past six years, I can't get anything done in this car. Look at how bright it is right now. I can't even see this screen. I have to just squint to see this text, and I had already prepped the text to make it large and bold face just so I could squint and see it. 
How am I supposed to work in that? How am I supposed to do math? or fractals or anything artistic where you have to see the minutest detail and the color gradient changes when I can't even see the screen. Because with the sun up, I can't see anything in this car. At this time of year, most of the day is darkness. Well, if it's dark, I, if I pull out a computer screen, this bright screen, I stick out like a sore thumb all around me. It attracts the gangbangers, it attracts the police, it attracts all kinds of attention. And then I can't get anything done. So I go down to the parking garage, the one place I can go where I've got concrete at my back so I can just open up the computer and nobody can see this big bright flash light. And nobody comes and messes with me except for this gargantuan, big pickup truck. This is my workplace, folks, and I'm being stalked there. I want you to take everything I just told you about my experience, just over the last three days. Forget all the other stuff. The last three days only. Everything's exactly the same except one thing. Replace me with a woman. A little lightweight 18 year old girl. Everything else is the same, but you've got this 18 year old girl all by herself, stuck living in a car or just at work and she's got something to do after work. Everything's the same. And this guy does to her what he's done to me. She would be on the phone to the police probably on day one. The police would come there and they would tell that guy, get out of here and don't ever come back. If he did come back, they would probably carry him away in handcuffs. He would be in a court of law and he would pay the price. But when it happens to me, what recourse is there? Nothing. Stay tuned for my next video because I'm about to show you the real cost of what Minnesota has done to me. Folks, they killed me.